Boys and girls, I'm Pastor Houston, and welcome to Kids Town Live. You know, being a Christian isn't always easy. It takes discipline. It's kind of like an athlete who's training to win the Olympics. But as a Christian, we should spend our whole lives training to be longtime followers of Jesus. What's the difference? Well, instead of training and working out to receive a gold medal, Christians are training for the ultimate reward, heaven. Today we're going to learn about Samuel and how he was growing up in the temple training to become a priest. What a great example of a kid who was spending his whole life training to be what God wanted him to be. Training must happen every single day and it requires discipline. But when we do it, we reach the end goal, which is eternal life with Jesus in heaven. So let's start our time off this morning in Kids Town Live by getting on our feet and shouting out some worship and praise to Jesus. Man, I cannot believe everything worked out the way it did. Well, you better believe it. It's like I told you last time, God can turn anything around. He works all things together for our good if we live according to his purpose. I know, and can you believe the coach offered me my very own private tryout with all the coaching staff? I can't believe it, but God certainly did. That's true, but Tony. Yeah, shortstop? I have to admit, 
I'm just a little nervous. Well, of course you're nervous. I mean, who wouldn't be? You think Neil Armstrong wasn't nervous the first time he took his first steps on the moon? You think Abraham Lincoln wasn't nervous when he gave the Gettysburg Address? You think they weren't nervous the first time they used Tony the Tiger to sell cereal? He's a tiger! He could have eaten anybody! Yeah. I guess. My point is, this is a big deal. It's a huge moment. It's okay to be nervous. The point is that you train and prepare yourself for when that moment arises. Good idea. So what's on the agenda for training today? Well, today we're gonna do some weight training. Oh, sweet. I love pumping iron. What weights are we gonna put on first? Tony? Tony, come on. Come on, we got training to do. Tony, Tony. You are creeping me out, man. Snap out of it. Come on. Well, you failed that training shortstop. What? What are you talking about? You said we were going to do weight training. Exactly. Weight training. You didn't wait very well, shortstop. Patience is a virtue, my friend. Well, I didn't realize what you were talking about. I understand, but that is not the only kind of training we're going to do today. Good. We're also going to train your mind. Awesome. How should we do that? I've got a really good riddle for you. I've got keys, but no lock. I have space, but no doors. You can enter, but can't go outside. What am I? Crazy, that's what you are. I don't see the point in all this training anyways. We've already done so much in the past several weeks. Can't we just be done? No way, bucko. I'm talking about training daily. And not even with basketball. I'm talking about with your relationship with God. It's something you have to start when you're very young. Train with God daily, and he'll take us where we need to go for his game plan. Let me guess, there's a promise in the Bible that talks about that. You bet your honeydew biscuits there is. It's found in Proverbs 22.6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, sounds like I have some more training to do. And so do the kids today, so let's get to it. All right. All right, hey, you know one time I tried to put a basketball in my mouth?
Hey kids, it's me, Callie from the Valley, and I'm like here to tell you like what you gotta know. Today, we're like talking about how you like need to train to be lifelong followers of Jesus. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will train to be a Christian every single day. I don't really like training because like when you're training and working out, you start to like sweat. You grody. Uh, yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Oh my lanta, you had me like so scared for a second. I thought I was gonna have to like jazzercise or something. Yeah, we're talking about like training to be a Christian. That means you have to like read your Bible and pray and stuff. <sighs> Way better. So every time today somebody asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. I will train to be a Christian every single day. And that's what you gotta know. I'm Callie from the Valley saying TTYL. Yeah, get down. Yeah, get down. Hi, I'm Zach, the youth intern here at Northgate. Are you ready for today's Bible story? Today's Bible story is about a man named Samuel, and it's all found in the book 1 Samuel 3. His story is awesome, but it all started when he was just a kid, like you. Samuel's mom, Hannah, prayed for years to have a son, and God gave her Samuel. Because she was so thankful, she decided to give her son, Samuel, to the Lord. That meant when Samuel was a kid, he moved into the temple of the Lord with the priest Eli. One night, after everyone had gone to sleep, Samuel heard a voice. It startled him and he woke up. The voice said, Samuel, Samuel. Yes, what is it? Samuel said as he ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Eli woke up and said, what? I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Then, once Samuel was back in bed and dozing off again, the voice called out once more, Samuel! So he got up and he went to Eli again, saying, Here I am. Did you call me? Once again, Eli said, I didn't call you, my son. Go back to bed. This all happened one more time. Samuel went to bed and the voice called his name. And he ran to Eli and Eli said, nope, it wasn't me. But this time, Eli realized what was happening. The voice Samuel was hearing was God's. So Eli told Samuel, 
go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel! This time Samuel replied, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Then God spoke to Samuel and showed him the future. It was epic! Samuel, a young kid, was listening to God's voice and finding out the future. In fact, Samuel spent the rest of his childhood serving God and training to be a priest. When Samuel was an adult, he became the priest he always trained to be. In fact, he was the priest who anointed David. You know, the David that killed the giant Goliath with a stone? Because Samuel spent his whole life training to be who God wanted him to be, God was able to do some amazing things with him. And if you start training, God can use you too. So pay attention to your lesson. You'll learn a lot about this.
is Randy Teast, short for Miranda, but too long for me, so I just go by R. R. Teast. Now, I've just been working on my newest painting here, but I think I'm going to take a break. So why don't you help me with today's power verse? See, the problem is I sleepwalk at night. And last night I was painting today's power verse and I started using pictures instead of words. So now I need you to help me figure out what it's supposed to say. Let's take a look at it. Choo-choo? <laughs> what? No, that can't be it. Um, chugga-chugga? Boys and girls, what could this word be? Oh, it's just a train, that's right, train up a little one, young person, well, what's another word for that? Ah oh, yes, child, in the way he should go, and when he is a grandpa, no, when he is um, elderly, oh, old, he, well, you know, that sounds like will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. That's it. Great job, boys and girls. Now, let's make sure that we don't forget it. So everyone stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Great job, everyone. You can all have a seat. Now, would you like to see today's painting? Of course you would. It's absolutely fabulous. See, today I've decided to paint a peanut doing a cartwheel. Isn't that cool? I wish I could do that. You know, maybe someday. Anyway, thank you all so much for your help with today's power verse. I'll see you later, boys and girls. Bye-bye. boys and girls, it's Pastor Houston here, and let's talk about today's Bible story. Whew. I gotta, I gotta work out and get some training in here. I gotta stretch. Oh, that hurts. Oh, wow. See, boys and girls, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be running in a race in the Olympics soon, and I, I really need to make sure that I'm ready to go. You know, I, I actually have to be ready by tomorrow morning. So I only started preparing for this race like right now. I'm going to try and cram in as much exercises as I can. Do you think I'm going to be ready for that race tomorrow? No! Of course not. That would be completely silly. If you're going to run a race or do anything in the Olympics, you have to train for it. And I don't mean for a couple of days or weeks or months. I'm talking about you have to train for years to get ready for the Olympics. Most athletes that compete in the Olympics train their whole lives for hours and hours every day. In fact, there is so much that we can learn about our lives as a Christian from following the training habits of Olympic athletes. While the Olympic athlete trains for their sport, Christians need to train to be the best followers of Jesus they can. So the very first thing we have to remember is... Olympic athletes have to train every single day to be really good at their sport. Can you imagine an athlete who didn't pay any attention or didn't do any training all during the week? Well, what if they only practiced one day, or, or maybe even two days a week? They wouldn't be very good at their sport, would they? Now, I want you to think about someone who is training to be the best follower of Jesus they can. I mean, imagine that their goal is to be really close to Jesus, but they only spend time with them one or two days a week. They don't train or practice any discipline that will make them a better Christian. They worship and they go to church on Sundays, but by the time Tuesday rolls around, nobody can tell that they're even a Christian. Now that wouldn't be very good, would it? Of course not. So if you want to be a follower of Jesus, it requires training every day. So the next thing that we have to remember is this. 
Do you know what discipline means? Well, according to the dictionary, discipline is control gained by enforced obedience or order, orderly conduct or a pattern of behavior, self-control. So for an athlete to have discipline, they have to have a pattern of behavior or self-control. They have to practice doing all the right things. What are some of the things that an athlete could do to have discipline? Well, they could be running, they could be lifting weights, they could be practicing their routine over and over again. And those are all great things. Now, knowing that, if you wanna be a follower of Jesus, what should you do? Well, you need to read your Bible every day. You need to pray every day. And you need to obey God and do what's right every day. You need to show love and kindness to others every single day. See, it takes discipline. Is it always easy to do those things every day? No way. In fact, it's tough. Sometimes I don't feel like praying. Sometimes reading the Bible doesn't sound like much fun. Sometimes being kind to others is hard, but it's worth it. It's worth it to keep trying and training every single day. Why is it worth it? Because the end goal is eternal life, heaven. Training to be a lifelong follower of Jesus can be hard day in and day out, but if we remember the goal, the reward, then we can do it. Olympic athletes have one goal in mind when they train. What is it? That's right, the gold medal. They train every day and every day they think about the gold medal and how if they keep it up and they become the best at what they're doing, this gold medal could be theirs. Well, Christians, we have an even greater goal in mind than a, a gold medal. See, we have the promise of eternal life in heaven. And if we train and discipline ourselves to live for Jesus here on earth every day, when we get to the end, it's really only the beginning of our heavenly reward. We get to spend forever with Jesus. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the race that we run and that we don't run it alone, that you're there with us and you're helping us every step of the way. But Father, remind us that we need to train every single day to be the best Christian we can be. We need to spend time reading our Bible. We need to spend time praying. We need to spend time learning how to be nice to the people around us and doing the good things that we should do. And Father, we know that when we cross the finish line, it's not going to be a gold medal that hangs around us. But Father, we're going to get to go to heaven and spend eternity with you. Father, that's the greatest prize ever. And we thank you for this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, like, what you got to know? Did you see that? That was for a touchdown. Hey, boys and girls, I am James Brady, and I'm here to do the brain drain with you this week. I am pretty excited about that. So why don't we begin with the first question? What do you got to know today? What you got to know today? Training is important. I'm going to be the best Christian ever. Woo! Or I will train to be a Christian every single day. What's the correct answer? Let's hear it. I will train to be a Christian every single day. That means putting on that armor of God and getting ready to go out there. All right, question number two. Where did Samuel live? Where did he live? Did he live with his mom in the cellar playing video games? Hmm. In the temple of the Lord? Was he living in the temple of the Lord? Or was he living in Alaska up with the bears and whatnot? Well, the answer is, he was living in the temple of the Lord. Question number three. Who was the priest that trained Samuel? Was it Eli? Was it Ethan? Or was it Elephant? Which one? 
Do you remember? It was Eli. Eli was training Samuel. Question number four. What did Samuel hear in the middle of the night? Did he hear a song? Did he hear a voice? Or did he hear a hoof, 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 a bark? Which one? Well, it was a voice. He heard a voice in the middle of the night. Question number five. Whose voice did Samuel hear? Which voice did Samuel hear in the middle of the night? Was it God's voice? Was it Eli's voice? Or was it his own voice? Which one? And the answer is it was God's voice. He heard God's voice in the middle of the night. Number six, when Samuel grew up and became a priest, who did he anoint as the future king? He's grown up, who did he anoint? Did he anoint Eli? Did he anoint David? Or did he anoint Jesus? Which one did he anoint? And the answer is David. That is correct. I think you boys and girls are doing a fantastic job. So let's continue with number seven. According to our lesson today, blank must happen every day. What's got to happen every day according to our lesson today? Learning. We've got to continue to learn every day. Training, we got to continue to train. Or sleeping, do we need to sleep? Uh, well, the answer is training, of course. We've got to train, 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 train. Question number eight. According to our lesson today, training requires what? What does that training require? Does it require God? Does it require discipline? Or does it require rest? Which one does it require in our lesson today? Well, it's obviously discipline. You must have discipline. Question number nine. According to our lesson today, training keeps the what in mind? Keeps what in mind? Training keeps the good in mind, the goal in mind, or the fun in mind? And the correct answer, training keeps the goal in mind. And finally, question number 10, where was our power verse found today? John 2.16, Proverbs 22.6, or Romans 6.2? Hmm, and the correct answer is Proverbs 22.6. I think you boys and girls did a fantastic job. It was great having you with us. And we will see you next week on Brain Drain. All right, boys and girls, that was fun, wasn't it? Learning to train for God, to be like the Olympics and to be an athlete, to pray, to give thanks, to read his word, all these things he wants us to do, to give us strength for that relationship with Jesus. That's pretty awesome. So why don't we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for these kids. Thank you for the things we learned. Help us to always think of you throughout the day, to train our minds and our bodies and our spirits just to love you and seek you out and do all the things that you would have us do. We pray these things in your awesome son's name. Amen. So boys and girls, remember, rejoice always. Pray continually and give thanks for this is God's purpose for you in Christ Jesus. And we'll see you next week.